Which is great. I, I think it's great. Yes. This is a case where biased data is a-okay. My name is Sarah Jane Schmidt, and I'm from the AIP POTS staff. I'm Jim Davenport from the University of Washington. My name is Stephanie Douglas. I'm an NSF fellow at the Harvard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics. That's a good question. <laughs> Science-y things on camera. Right, you're what? You're not drinking coffee. I I've had a lot of coffee, <laughs> which is not surprising. Uh, what's it? Oh yeah, I'm, I need to hydrate. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like not drinking yeah. enough water and this counts a little bit. All right, so today I'm having coffee with Stephanie Douglas and Sarah Schmidt, two of my closest science overlapping friends in astronomy. Mm -hmm. We have been friends for a long time and our science interests overlap massively. But today, the goal was to talk about the gender survey that we've been doing. Um, which both of them have contributed to uh, throughout many, many years of it going on. And we've been scheming about what the future is, so hopefully this video will just be sort of a behind-the-scenes scheming session. Okay. So over the course of the project, how much data have you gotten? I think, well, when we did the Nature paper, I mm -hmm. think we said something like a thousand talks, roughly. As I think you pointed out, we've got really good coverage for this meeting. Yeah. Um, and so from the Cool Stars talks, we probably have now hundreds, maybe maybe a 200 total. You both did such a good analysis of the last two cool stars that we should be able to do like like real evolution now. And we've had yeah. interventions this time, right? Like the, the, the game changed a little bit. The rules changed just a little bit. Well, and that, that as, as we've talked about, has been getting some, some grumbling from yeah. usually yeah. the more senior, but not exclusively the more senior people. Things that we thought should make the fraction of women asking questions increase, and none of, we didn't really see a significant change. Right. Um, only a very slight one. And so I'll be interested to see hmm. if the sort of, at least semi-sustained and intentional interventions by the SOC actually make a difference in how that balanced out. We've also seen very different chair styles, yeah. and even amongst the ones who are correcting, some of them seem to approach as a, as a joke, and others seem to really kind of get like what we're doing and why. Yeah. And most, most people know how to play nice, but... Few bad apples. <laughs> well, I think even if we could provide, so I didn't, unfortunately, uh, ran late and didn't see the intro on Monday, um, but I think providing some guidance of like, can you rephrase the, your comment as a mm. question, which may not necessarily be ideal either, but even just to like, have you considered X mm. instead of, well, you know, X contradicts what you say or something, right. can come across as at least more polite and putting the respectful of maybe the speaker just didn't have time to put it in. I always just think like, oh, if only people understood, if we could make them understand. Yeah. I, I keep on... And it's sometimes a mistake thinking that we're scientists. If we show them the data right. that says we're doing things wrong, they'll change. But I, so part of me is like, we should show them the data and give them, give them another chance. But I know you're never going to get everyone. I think you're right in that we definitely should show the data. Yeah. Right. Like I keep thinking like this. This has it has reached its peak, like of people knowing about it. Like if they're not following me on Twitter at this point, or either of you, or watching your blog, or, or yeah, or watching the YouTube blog, <laughs> hit that subscribe button. Um, <laughs> But every year I, I run into like 20 more people who are like, oh, that's awesome. If we can find a large enough audience to speak right. the data to, mm -hmm. I think we'll find a lot of kindred spirits. I think we'll have some people who will, you know, like I said that the survey was impetus for her to stand up and ask questions. Like, just to, sca just to skew the statistics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I've heard other people say the same thing right. as well. Which is great. Yeah. I, I think it's great. Yes. This is a case where biased data is a-okay. Yeah. <laughs> We're Bias your data, everyone. <laughs> We're changing the world. What do you think um, of the people who say, oh, this effect you're seeing, it is only junior, senior? I mean, mm. there are some ways we can take data to counteract that, but... I've definitely made that argument in the past. That to me, it, right. it, it, my gut says that... Oh, yeah, it's a secondary effect. Yes. Yeah, right. um, gender, age. Gender and then age, right. yeah. Well, I, I think the argument I've heard some people make is that the um, seniority is the primary effect and we're actually observing the secondary effect. I guess anecdotally I disagree with that because I know quite a few senior women who have talked about this study and how important they find it. Oh, yeah, but I think you may, you could also see a senior effect where if that's the type of questioning session that they're used to, if they don't see a problem with it or that fits them well, then they're not gonna, mm. they're not gonna necessarily want to challenge it 
or they're not going to necessarily want to be seen as the woman who rocks the boat on it. Mm. You made this comment to me maybe two years ago that are we like on a deeper philosophical level, are we measuring the thing that we care about? Mm -hmm. Like is asking <laughs> questions actually something good? I mean, it's nice because it's a measurable thing. Right. Right. Like you can, you can put it in different boxes and add it up. There's a, an onsats there that says the right interaction is Q and A. Mm -hmm. But that is the correct way to engage at a meeting. You know, our stated goal is to make the meetings better or whatever, but like, we might just make them more chatty. Better. <laughs> <laughs> well, we want interactions at a meeting. And yeah. the, the point is we want all people to come to the table. Yes. Um, not this table, it's very small, but you know, we want to make, the, framed. <laughs> we wanna <laughs> make the table big enough for everyone. And I think one of the problems we're encountering is I don't think, a lo I don't think everyone is on board with that goal. Often it's true that you have to provide, um, and this is co-opting a term from the accessibility and disability community, a multimodal access where you want mm. many approaches to being able to do an activity so that people with different abilities can come to the table. And, you know, sometimes it's ability, sometimes it's what your personality is, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Like, some people are going to function well in a giant lecture hall and others aren't. Some are going to function better on Twitter or snarking amongst friends. <laughs> we don't do that. Not us. <laughs> Never. Well, there's the, the issue of, like, if you let the talk time go longer, you get a higher fraction of women, but I think that also affects the type of Q&A or discussion time that you can have. Right. Um, and, uh, Seamless cut. <laughs> <laughs> the question that people have asked is, you know, why are you cutting off comments? Because that's mm -hmm. your, you're cutting off the chance to have a good discussion. These people are provoking discussion. Right. Um, but in a two to five minute uh, Q&A section, how much of a discussion are we having? Or is mm -hmm. it just a couple of people standing up across the lecture hall with microphones and saying th like saying things at each other right i go back to this idea of like what the q a is for mm -hmm. um obviously it's for points of clarification after my last cool stars talk um several senior people did raise their hand and say have you considered that this might be an effect on your data right and i went no i haven't but let's talk about it afterwards a discussion is a two-way street and you can't have a two-way street in front of 500 people like that some people can but i also know that others can't right mm -hmm. there was a grad student who gave a talk who was clearly just blindsided by all the questions and I bet that if he'd been somewhere in his element right. he probably presumably would have been fine with at least some of those questions right um, often the comment during the talk is, is again as I phrase it to like draw attention to the commenter like I know AAS has the session chair breakfasts mm -hmm. and so I don't know if there's some way at cool stars because clearly this the SOC here has been mm -hmm. on board with a lot of these changes of sitting down with the session chairs and saying hey this is why, this is our motivation, here's some guidelines we want you to follow, maybe practicing interrupting people, because I think that's a thing, that especially before the first time, doing those kinds of interventions takes practice, and so if you, spitting out the words the first time, I know from experience, is really hard. What about the structure, the dynamics of how we ask the questions? So at AAS, sometimes it's, there is a microphone in the middle of the room, please line up can be very good for certain rooms, for certain audiences, but uh, I don't think that's usually good for three minutes. Worst for mobility challenged people and I think yes. also people with um, anxiety yes. sometimes. You get yes. standing there waiting in line going like, yeah. God, oh God. <laughs> it's too much time to think. Uh, yeah. Just get spooked. On the other hand, in a very big room, is a, a mic running is good, but mic running can be hard. Very often the dictatorial control of the moderator saying it's in the back and then you and then you and then that right. becomes like dude 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 yeah you know, one way we've done it and we did this for part of my splinter was any questions and then just let people raise their hands and then let the old people like wave their hands back like, and then be like uh, yes ma'am <laughs> <laughs>